Welcome to process modeling using BPM1. In 12 minutes I'll show you how to model your business processes using the BPM1 tool suite of Palestina. So if you want to create a process model, you navigate to the domain where you want to create the model. So say we want to create a new process model in the domain demo. We just right click on the mouse, select new process model, and I'll create one and it will show the name, who created it or who's using it the date when it was created with the version and the status. If you just double click it, it will open the process designer and it will show the model, which in this case there's no model, so it's all empty. On the left hand side you'll see a process structure tab, which shows the uh, structure of the process, actual process model, organization, that means what roles are involved, and the actual structure of the process. Again it's all empty because there's nothing there. Uh, today I'm going to be modeling a complaints handling process, not because we get so many complaints at Palestina, but because if you're uh, concerned with quality and you want to get your ISO certification, for example, then you need to have such a process in place. So you might as well model it, how you actually handle complaints within your organization. Well, first of all, let's uh, create some roles. And first of all, I'm going to start out saying that a role is not the same as a function. Uh, a function can consist of multiple roles, but the role, like the little icon, uh, identifies it's like a little cap you wear, and it's the hat you wear when you do a certain activity. So first of all, we have a fairly generic role. It's called employee. All the employees in the organization have that role. Then we have a quality manager. Somebody's responsible for the whole quality process. And, well, that's okay, sufficient for now. And we can start modeling. Uh, well, first of all, let's uh, we pick up an activity from the little palette here, and we can drag it to the process window. And we'll just drop it there, we can double click it. And then we can enter more information relevant to this particular activity. Well, first of all, when somebody lodges in a complaint, then you it has to get uh, well accepted, especially if it's delivered by word and word of mouth. There's a meeting between, a, say, for example, a salesperson and a customer. Then that's it's all verbal; it's nothing gets written down. But there is a complaint, for example. Uh, so we'll call this uh, accept complaint, and we have to assign a role to this activity. Well, it's a generic role, it really could be anybody talking to the customer, so we'll just give it this generic role. Press OK, and you'll see now that the employee has this accept. Accept what? Apparently the little icon is a little bit too small, so I'm going to increase the size here. Tools. And I'll make it here, from a small icon, I'll make it a medium sized icon. And now, luckily, it shows the complete text, accept complaint. Of course, the complaint has to come from somewhere. And like we said, it's in a meeting it's, uh, between the customer and the employee of the organization. Uh, but somebody, something is the trigger of this process. So we'll take a trigger from the palette and we'll assign it. We'll connect it to this first activity. And we'll just do that, like I just showed you, by picking it up and dropping it onto the activity. But really, we're talking not about uh, something time-related, but we want a different type. You want a human trigger, and we'll call it Watch Complaint. As you notice, you can give more information, uh, description, instructions, and so forth about this particular trigger. Uh, I'm not going to go into that at this moment. You see, that I noticed that the little icon changed into a little person. Um, so the person, somebody has a complaint, and that's the trigger for the start of this process. That's what starts this particular process. Okay, so first we accept the complaint. Um, at some point we also have to register it. So we'll to pick up another one. We'll say register complaint. Uh, also usually done by the employee. And if you go from accept to register. And also I make that, I differentiate between, between those two because complaints can also be lodged, for example, by email. So I do it this way, and I say, this is also a large complaint. Large complaint.
on planes. Um, but now I select mail or email really. And you'll see the icon changes again. That represents that it's an, an email coming in that triggers the process. Uh, so really I have to go back because if this is the beginning of the process then I can mark that in my uh, in my model by selecting that it's not only the start of a sub-process, it's actually the start of the, the whole process model. And then you'll notice it gets two little green dots here at the beginning, at the top. I mean, uh, One little problem I think here that that's not really correct uh, because there could be a status in between here, I think. And I'll just pick up status, I can drop it on the line, and it puts it in between. And it is that that between the accepting and the registering, because there, there's two options to come in, I just want to give that a different name. So it's that ready to register complaint. And really, this particular activity could also be the start of a process model. Like I said, there's two options for the, the complaint to come in uh, through a customer who complains to an employee and then it gets registered or by an email that directly can get registered. So two different options to start the process. Um, so I hope this sort of gives you an uh, idea of uh, how the modeling works. If we look on the left side on the structure now, we'll still notice that there's nothing under the process because there's still it's just one level, there's no hierarchy. But you'll notice under the organization you already can see the different roles that we've created. Thank you for watching.